people? Can you say hi to Lo- – I'd love to say hi to Lois Lane. What a million. <laughs> say hi to Dana Delaney. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, I like that you called me Lois. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dana. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm glad to hear it. Um, let's jump right in. We, uh, you were known for China right. Beach, Desperate Housewives. You were also played Josephine Marcus in my favorite movie ever, Tombstone. But we're going to talk about Superman, mm-hmm. the 25-year anniversary, and the Blu-ray box set. Um, I kind of want to know how you got the role of Lois, but we need to rewind the clock a little bit and talk about uh, the Mask of the Phantasm, right? Your Andrea Andrea Beaumont. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. And you were named after Andrea Romano, I believe, the infamous voice director. Yes, it was very very important to. Very important to say it correctly, Andrea, not Andrea. Right, right, right. So can I ask how you got the role of Andrea Beaumont, which I got to believe led to Lois Lane? Well, what happened was um, Arlene Sorkin, who is a very good friend of mine, who played the role of Harley Quinn. Uh, I think it was written for her, actually, mm-hmm. uh, by Paul Dini. So she suggested me to Paul Dini. And then they just offered me the job, which was kind of amazing because uh, I'd never done animation before. So that was a whole new world for me. But I kind of lucked out because it was, you know, the same people. It was Paul Dini and Alan Burnett and, and Tim. Um, Tim. Bruce Tim. Tim Tim. Was it Tim? Br- <laughs> Bruce Tim. <God>. Bruce Tim. <laughs> the Tim Tim is in Fortune Rush. Bruce Tim. Um, Yes, and um, and Andrea, and the thing that struck me was they re- they wanted it to be like a real movie. They wanted it to be very real. They didn't want any kind of you know comic book voice acting. They wanted it to be very human, very real. So it was a great kind of entry into that world. And then when they decided to do Superman, the animated series. I auditioned for it. I didn't just get the part. I had to audition for it. Hmm. And when I read the script, it was so clear to me that um, this was just a great show because uh, the writing was so snappy and so classic. And it reminded me of um, His Girl Friday, the um, Rosalind Russell part in it. And that's kind of how I modeled my character for the audition. Hmm. But I remember, uh, you know, kind of snappy, fast-talking, broad. And when I uh, went to do the audition, it was just exciting to be able to say Dana Delaney auditioning for the role of Lois Lane because I grew up a Lois Lane person. She's part of my DNA. And then I got to say those great lines in the audition about nice ass, you know, <laughs> and just the Nietzschean idea. And, and I'd forgotten that... In the series, Lois is the one that names the Superman. She comes up with that name, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So you, this is at the the beginning, I would say, of the renaissance of of big name uh, live action actors coming into voice acting. Was it? And you mentioned that was the first time you had done it. Was it an easy transition for you to go f- into the booth and, and and just act normally, as if you were on screen? Um, yeah, it was actually really exciting because, you know, we never got to do radio theater, which, you know, actors before my time got to do that. And that was always part of being part of the studio system is you would actually often take movies that you'd already made and go and do a radio version of that for people to hear. So it was so common for actors earlier than my time. So it was, it felt like a radio play. I imagine that I was doing Mercury Theater with Orson Welles. And all the actors were there in a room as they could be. And then you have your mic and you're sitting on a stool, except for Mark Hamill, who always insists on standing up. And, you know, you're facing the The only odd thing was not being able to look the actor in the aisle. eye. That was, you know, the biggest challenge in the beginning because you have to face the microphone. But once I got used to that, it was fun because in a weird way, it frees you to just use your imagination. I also love the fact that you didn't have to get dressed up or put makeup on. <laughs> you just go to the studio, you know. <laughs> and it was fun. And you got to meet all of these amazing actors. I mean, 
I would walk in and, and it was my idol, you know, childhood idols were there in the room. I got to meet Malcolm McDowell and Ephraim Zimbler Jr., who I'd grown up watching on FBI, or Shelley Fabray, who, you know, I'd grown up watching on TV, and or Ed Agner, you know, and they were all so great, and everybody was there just, they were all ready to play, and they all had a great sense of humor, so it was a ball. Mm-hmm. You you mentioned you based it on the smart talking snappy girl. Um, did you did you have any influence of previous Lois Lane voice actors like Joan Alexander or Sharon Farron? No, I had um, as a kid growing up uh, watching the TV series in the nineteen fifties. Mm-hmm. So I started watching that when I was like four years old, and I remember it vividly. And I come in from nursery school and watch it. And so my image of Lois Lane was Phyllis Baxter, and then it was Noel Neal. Mm-hmm. That was my image. And then also, I every Sunday I would go to church, and my reward was to go to the drugstore and get a comic book for ten cents. So I that back then Lois had her own comic book, so I would always buy the Lois Lane comic book. So I had my own vision of Lois Lane from an early, early age. Well, now your name is synonymous with the character, much like uh, Phyllis Coates, Noel Neal, <laughs> and Margot Kidder, right? Um, yeah. Is that, would you, is that manifest yeah. destiny? You've been dreaming about it all your life, a lot of your life? Um, I think so. Um, Andrea Romano remarked, I'd forgotten that, but my first day of shooting Lois Lane, evidently I started crying, <laughs> which I do now remember because um, she, you know, she was an idol for me. She was somebody that I looked up to and certainly have modeled a lot of my life over. I mean, I grew up being, you know, raised to be a career girl, and that's, that's what Lois is. Do you ever, since your portrayal of Lois Lane. There's been a, a lot of other um, actresses that have portrayed her. Do you ever get to hang out with other Lois Lanes? Do you have a special mm-hmm. club? Do you have maybe uh, pink satin jackets? Uh, <laughs> um, well, I know um, Terry Hatcher, so, you know, I've got to hang out <laughs> with her. Um, she did her version, and she was great. And I did get to meet uh, Noel Neal, and that was great. And, and you're right, I was saying Phyllis Baxter, but it's Phyllis Coates, you're right. But Phyllis Baxter was, was part of Superman, too, wasn't she? I remember saying that. I think she was in the movie. She was in something. I think so. That sounds right. I'm looking her up right now. She was Moth Cat. Yeah she, yeah, she was in an early version. Maybe it was radio. I think she was in the radio version. Maybe that's it. Um, I know she was Lois, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. How do you feel when I do have a picture? I do have. A... I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say I do have a picture. I, I have a picture of me and Noel Neal together that's on my desk. Wow. That was a lot to me. Oh yeah, she was in Superman in the also in the train when when Young Clark was running. Okay. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, I was friends with. Um, Chris Reed, too. Um, and I remember when he got that job, when he got the Superman job, and that was a big thing for him. Wow. You knew him that long. That's pretty That's pretty incredible. Yeah. So, so yeah. as a big fan, she's she's intertwined in your life so much. What's it like when young Lois, long, younger fans of Lois come up to you and tell you how much Lois Lane means to them? I think it's great. I mean, I feel like every generation has you know, the lowest of their time. And it's right that the Superman keeps evolving for the time that they're in. Um, I think what, what lasts about our show, our series, the animated series, is that Bruce Timm was so smart in creating a look and a feel that was timeless. So it it lasts and it's still relevant today. You know, it had a bit of a retro classic feel, but it was also present day and modern. And I feel like the music is classic, the look is classic, the dialogue is classic. It doesn't. I watched some of it last night, and it really holds up. I mean, I'm laughing out loud. <laughs> so I'm happy that whatever we did at that period, it still works today. Mm-hmm. You recently played Edith uh, Roosevelt on HBO Max's The American Guest. 
So for a little over 25 years, mm -hmm. quarter of a century, you've been playing strong, influential women throughout history. Is there any comparison between Lois Lane and Edith Roosevelt? <laughs> no, they're very different. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they're both strong women, but, you know, back in Edith's day, uh, if you didn't find a husband and you didn't have any money, it was not it was not a good life for you. You basically a sister living in a one room cold flat, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but they're, they're, they had a the, the similarity is that TR and Edith had a great, great love story that I think a lot of people don't know about. So I hope that people learn more about that because um, even though she was a quiet force in his life, she was definitely a force that he he collaborated with her on everything. Mm -hmm. He ran all of his political ideas by her. She was the politically savvy one. Um, and I hope that people learn more about them because it's a great story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me uh, throw one more question out at you as I show myself out the door here. Uh, when I was a little kid, I used to have to get up earlier than my brother to beat him to the couch to get the good spot in front of the TV so I could watch my Saturday morning cartoons. But I'd have to get up even earlier than that to beat my parents into the kitchen so I could pour myself a big bowl of sugary goodness to start the day. So, Dana Delaney, I'd like to know, what is your favorite bowl of Saturday morning cereal, and what was your favorite cartoon to watch? Ah. Uh. Um, I wasn't a cereal person. I never liked cereal. Um, being from New England, my favorite breakfast was raspberry applesauce and cream. That was my favorite breakfast. <laughs> or cherry pie. Sometimes we got that. Sometimes we got that cherry pie with uh, cream cheese. That was another Yankee delight. Um, and cartoons. Um, definitely watched Bugs Bunny. Wow, Bugs Bunny. Um, oh, and the Flintstones, but that was on at night, wasn't it? In the morning, I guess, you know, it was Warner Brothers, but it's funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thanks so much for your time. I'm absolutely delighted to talk to you great today, day. Dana. Thank. Uh, have a great day, and we'll see you on the other side. Thanks, Thank Gary. Thank you. Thanks.